Hey everybody, welcome to Organic Chemistry 2. These are the topics that we're going to cover, and so we're going to do a review of resonance, which is critical for the whole semester, okay? So you really got to bring that back up to the front of your memory and make sure you got it down. The second thing is we're going to talk about the measuring of the stability of conjugated systems. How do we figure out why a conjugated system is stable? And so we'll learn about that. And then we'll talk about it from an orbital point of view next. So we're going to look at this Huckel molecular orbital calculation, not the formula. That's just way, way too much than, than what we need to know. But we'll, we'll get the, the, uh, the actual outcome from that, and we'll, we'll see how that relates to conjugation and how that gives us some information about the stability of conjugation. And then finally, we're going to follow up at the end of this one, this one part, this part one, by going over UV visible spectroscopy and going over some of that philosophy and, and how it applies, again, to conjugated systems. So this chapter is all about conjugated systems. And so that's a good place for us to begin. So let's start by uh, going through a general introduction. And so we'll, we'll talk about what a conjugated system is and things related to that. So the first thing is, the most important thing is, to, well, what is a conjugation? What does it mean? So let's talk about conjugation. Now conjugation is referring to p orbitals. So when three atoms, or I should write maybe three consecutive atoms, so maybe that's a better way to write it, uh, when three, whoops, come on, already it's starting. Uh, three consecutive atoms, so their neighbors, have p orbitals. We say that the system is conjugated. So conjugation is referring to the relationship of orbitals, and in particular, p orbitals. So we're talking about the relationship of p orbitals, p orbitals, okay? And so when a system is considered conjugated, it's because three neighbor atoms all have p orbitals, and they're right next to each They're connected to each other through a sigma bond, so through a single bond, right? And so that's, that's the idea of conjugation. Now, the, the opposite of conjugation is something known as isolated or isolation, right? And that's where there is more uh, than one bond or the, there's no consecutive p orbitals, three or more in a row. Three or more, by the way, or more consecutive atoms with p orbitals. Okay, so isolation or isolated systems are where they're not consecutive. The, so the orbital, the p orbitals are not next door to each other. They're further away. Okay, so, so the p orbital orbitals are further away. So you can have two uh, atoms that are next door neighbors that have a p orbital, and that's not conjugated, right? It has to be at least three or more. So if you have that and there, there's not three or more, then it's considered an isolated system. Or, and I guess I could write that. So instead of isolation, we could write isolated. So an isolated system compared to a conjugated system. Now, there's one more term that we need to know in terms of how p orbitals relate to each other, and this is called a cumulated system, cumulated. And the, the way this works is that there is no separation of the p orbitals uh, between, for the, each atom. So each atom has no um, separation. So it's three or more p orbitals that are not separated by a sigma bond, okay? So these are the three definitions, and they're all referring to the relationship of orbitals, p orbitals in particular, okay? Now, all this makes uh, sense, but let, it makes a lot more sense if we can see an actual illustration, right? So let's do that. So here are three examples. So let's say we have 
a system like this. And I'm going to draw it three times. Now, notice what I did so far. Let's talk about that. Right now, I'm laying out the framework of sigma bonds, right? So these are all carbon-carbon single bonds. And now, of course, I'm going to lay on top of that my pi system, right, my double bonds. And so how can I do that? Well, one way is where there's a double bond, let's say here and here. Another way is where the double bonds are like that. And another way on top of that one is where the double bonds are like this. Okay, see that? So these are three examples that illustrate the definitions above. The first one, if we look closely, we have an atom here. Let me uh, highlight it. So this atom here and this one here, they're both uh, carbons that have p orbitals, right, making up the double bond, the pi bond. But there's no third atom next to it that has a p orbital. So the next p orbital or the next atom with a p orbital is right there on the right. It's further away, so it's not a neighbor. So this double bond here and this double bond there, they're not communicating with each other. They're isolated from each other. So this is isolated. So we can see that this is isolated because we have these two double bonds and they're separated by more than one single bond. So they're much further away. And this carbon here is sp3, right? It has only single bonds twice that you look at, plus the two H single bonds. And so that's going to break the, the communication between those two double bonds. And I'll show you what I mean. Look at the next one. So here we have a carbon that has, has a p orbital. That's how it made its double bond. And this one. And then here's a third atom right next door and a fourth one. So this is called a four pi system because there are four atoms, doesn't have to be carbon, but there are four atoms in a row that all have a p orbital that make up pi bonds, okay? So the fact that there's more than two atoms that have a p orbital to make up their pi bonds, that means that this is a conjugated system. So here's a conjugated system. It's a four pi system. Every atom that has a p orbital, you count that's in this continuous flow, this, this um, neighboring flow of p orbitals. Now look at this last example. So we have this continuous flow. We have one, two, three. So we have three atoms in a row with p orbitals, right? So this should be considered conjugated, but it's not. Because if you look closely, this right here, this double bond and that double bond are not separated by a single bond. Notice how this one has a single bond between them. Well, when two double bonds are not separated by a single bond, we call this accumulated. It's like a, a, it's accumulating, right? It's accumulated system. Now, all these, you could replace the word system by referring to the number of double bonds. I could say this is accumulated diene, right? Two double bonds. Or conjugated diene or isolated diene. If there was three double bonds, it would be accumulated, isolated, conjugated, triene, and so on. But more generically, we say system, right, if we're not concerned with the reference of number double bonds. So here are clear examples of the three different types of relationships that these orbitals can have, right? But now, what makes them different? Like, as far as I, I see visibly on paper what makes them different, but what's really important to recognize is the difference from their orbital point of view, okay? So this is somewhat of a review of last semester. I went through this at some point last semester, and I'm gonna do it again right now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at these systems and number them out. So let's say this carbon is one, this is two, three, four, and five. Here's one, two, three, four, and five. Here's one, two, three, four, and five. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to focus in on just the P system, the pi system. So in other words, I'm going to draw out a skeleton of my five carbons, right, left to right, one to five. But I, all I really want to look at is the P orbitals that make up these double bonds. And then we're going to discover the most important thing about this whole chapter, okay? So that's what's going to help us to figure this out. So if we look at number one, we've got this double bond. So let's draw a double bond here, a P orbital. And then number two has a p orbital, so let's draw it in. Remember, this is carbon one, 
right? This is two, this is three, four, and five. So it's just...